The Fox News political insiders are here. You can join our conversation on Facebook and Twitter because I'll read your posts. Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor via satellite tonight. Oh, look at that sunset behind you, gorgeous. John Laboutlier, former Republican congressman for New York, and Doug Schoen, former pollster for President Bill Clinton and Fox News contributor as well. All right, John, I want to go to you first. I'm going to start out with this tweet. American First says, neither Jeb Bush nor Marco Rubio poll even close to Donald Trump in their home state of Florida. All right, well, that piece was done in Florida this weekend, which is a worrisome thing if you're pro Jeb Bush, because why would the former two term governor be running around Florida? Well, the answer is he's in fourth place in Florida in the Republican polls. That's terrible. Rubio's in third place. He's the sitting U.S. senator. That's terrible. They're in trouble. And we haven't we don't spend enough time talking about the big story in the race is Trump and Carson are way ahead mm -hmm. everywhere of these guys. You know what? Let's talk about what's next, or shall sure. we say what's first? The Iowa caucus is fed first. Let's pop up where uh, the real clear politics, which is an average, right. you know, so we get to see kind of the conversion of a lot of different polling uh, that we watch here at Fox News. Ben Carson, a top 29 percent in Iowa. Donald Trump, 21%. So those two, as you said, John, are far out front. And then we dip down into still the double digits, but 10% tied. Ted Cruz came up a bit and Marco Rubio. Doug, right. your thoughts? Well, what we're seeing, as John suggested correctly, Harris, is that Ben Carson has surged in Iowa. There are a disproportionate number of evangelicals there. And he is taking advantage of his appeal to them. The larger point, though, is that Trump and Carson, neither of whom has served one day in government, mm -hmm. are commanding close to 50 percent or more of the Republican primary electorate. All right. Another tweet. Robert McLean says, well, we're tired of being betrayed with political talking points and being ignored by the people we elect. Pat, that's something you say all the time. Yeah, well, that's true. And I think that, um, you know, we have a situation here where watching the coverage, you would have thought after the last debate that the insiders, that Rubio and Bush and, uh, and Ted Cruz is more of an outsider than an insider, but a senator, someone in office, that they were somehow, at the, if you were from Mars, at the top of the field. The dominance of Trump, Carson, and to some extent Fiorino, who's not been elected, that majority of people who object to the political system as it is. And the Republican Party still has, has problems with that. And uh, I'm wearing my tie for the horror of all this that my <laughs> granddaughter made for me for Halloween with spiders and spidery things. And it's perfect to describe the Republican and in the American, state of American politics today. It's a horror show. And, and to, you know, something that Pat just said that tied in with that, Harris, if you can stay on your seat for the show, <laughs> <laughs> is that um, the insiders, the the insiders in, in Washington and in the media keep reporting that the inside candidates, Bush, Rubio, right. all this stuff, mm -hmm. when in fact, you know what, there isn't any more outside media. There really isn't any media that's out of this thing that can look objectively, well, except you have for... bloggers online well, and you have the, a few. I think we are, even though we're called, this segment's called the Political Insiders, the three of us were the ones four years ago who started talking about what was coming politically. Mm -hmm. We're called, you know, the Political Insiders, but we are really outsiders. We are reviled by the establishment for the stuff we well, say with you, guys you on Sunday rail night. against uh, both parties for, for what Pat was describing. Let's take a look at the New Hampshire Republican sure. uh, presidential primary as in the real clear politics average is showing. And look at Donald Trump in this number. I mean, this is pretty amazing how far out front he is. Doug, what are your thoughts? Well, in the same way that uh, Iowa is a natural fit for Ben Carson, New Hampshire is a much more... Um, economically conservative environment suits Donald Trump much better and he's got as the numbers suggest a big lead nationally what we're seeing is that Trump and Carson are very very close but what Pat Cadell said bears repeating Harris the outsiders continue to dominate the race whatever state you look at Carson has come up recently but his move has been a substantial one Trump's come down a bit. There's very little evidence yet of Rubio or Cruz coming up beyond, say, 8, 9, 10 percent. This is still an outsider's race. You know what's really interesting? Yeah. I mean, as you look, go ahead, Pat. 
No, I was just going to add to what Doug said, which is perfect, which is if, again, you read and I listen to people and I've been talking to them, and all of a sudden they're saying, well, it's obviously it's going to be Rubio versus Cruz. Ted Cruz will be the other. And I'm going, what are you people doing? You keep trying to make what is a revolutionary political year fit into your little structure of how politics work <laughs> prior to this year. And they don't get it. They still can't get that the country is blowing up. And by the way, can, can we, and they, and that's the point John made. Yeah, and on that, on that, Pat, I can't believe when I look back to last weekend, it was when the Bush conference was going on in Houston to try to stabilize mm -hmm. his campaign. And it was in the press every day that they were telling Jeb, you got to go after Rubio. Mm -hmm. And this, we, we knew, if you read the press, last Sunday they had the PowerPoint thing was available on Well, Drudge. Rubio called him out on that during the debate, but, and then but, he said it again this weekend. But can you imagine? Somebody told you, you want, to go after me. You want to be president of the United States, and the way to get there is to do a character assassination on a guy that you helped get going in politics, and you're standing next to him. Yeah. This is how you're going to win the president. I don't think that's breaking news. It just is, it was but not effective for Jeb. What is breaking wrong. news is that all the evidence since the debate suggests that Trump and Carson retain their strong position, and what Pat and John have said is absolutely true. People remain very angry. All right, we'll move on.